In this video, I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to make minor CSS edits on your website. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a very non-technical manner. It's not going to cost you anything. And this tool actually has a lot of power that I'm going to share with you in this video. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss a thing, click on the little bell off to the right and there might be a couple links in this video to different things and I'll put them in the video description box just to make it easier for you. So if you've had a WordPress website or many website, but pretty much everyone here has got a WordPress website for any length of time, invariably there's going to be little style things that you want to change and what those are is called CSS that stands for cascading style sheets in fact I've made several videos on it if you come to my website and just do a little search you can do a search for the phrase CSS and it will pull up those tutorial videos but I came across a new tool yesterday and I tested it out and I was extremely impressed with it and I, I immediately knew that this would help a lot of people that just want to make a minor change and they don't want to have to learn a whole new thing or install something on their website. They just might want to change a color, a font, some spacing, um, all of these various things without you know some of these overkill overloaded plugins that are available. Okay, there's my introduction. I'm going to do my best to hit everything as accurately as possible. This is a new tool. It doesn't cost anything. It's a new tool and things are probably likely to change and improve on it. So we'll definitely want to hit the discussion in the comment section down below to talk about this tool and little tricks that we discover along the way. Okay, so right now for WordPress we do have two tools available. Uh, one is called Yellow Pencil and it's 25 bucks per website and this is a WordPress plugin that you install on your website. It could be a little overkill. Uh, the next option and probably the most widely known is called CSS Hero and this is the same thing. It's a WordPress plugin. You install it on your website and you use it to make these changes. I can say both of these tools, they're a little technical and a little overwhelming and a little complicated when you actually try to use them. So they do have a bit of a learning curve. So yesterday I was on Facebook. A lot of you guys that are on Facebook, you're probably going to bump into me somewhere because I'm all over the place on Facebook and in a Facebook group someone has showed or shared this product right here and it is called canvas flip and it's right now it's on product hunt I'm gonna put a link to it on the this page right here this product page right here on product hunt I'm gonna put it in the video description because I'd like to encourage you to click on the link and if you have an a product hunt account go ahead and do an upvote I certainly did an upvote for this yesterday because it is pretty amazing what it does and you can read the discussions going on about it essentially it's an extension for the Chrome web browser. So essentially, you this is only going to work on Chrome. However, if you're building websites for yourself or for other people, you really need to have every web browser on your computer. This will work only with Chrome. And it's not something you install on WordPress. It's a Chrome extension. And that's actually one of the things I really like about it because you're able to use it to quickly make changes see how you like it and it writes the css for you in a very clean way and i will when when you see me in this tutorial you're going to say wow that is very clean css where yellow pencil and cs uh, css hero it's a very long css that they put out uh, very complicated stuff so the extension is free now they do have a paid option for collaboration that is actually very interesting. Most people won't need it, but I think if it fits in your workflow, it could be very nice. So here is the Canvas Flip website showing you this visual inspector. So when you're using it, it's going to have this little pop over and you're going to be able to make some of these basic changes, font sizes, colors, spacing, all kinds of stuff like that. And I'm going to make some changes to a page I'm building in Elementor in a sec. But 
uh, you should definitely take a look at the different paid options. It's actually very neat. So you, you would have a paid account and it allows you to sync your changes to the cloud. It allows you to have uh, different project files on their hosted service. It allows you to generate um, a way for, say, if you wanted to show these preliminary changes to someone, that they can see those changes and they can even comment back and forth. Uh, where's this? Uh, commenting right here so this is what the commenting looks like it looks a lot like project huddle another tool that I've talked about a lot but that's just for getting feedback that's not real-time feedback uh, on a temporary link it's pretty interesting what this does uh, right here uh, so you can collaborate this is actually very neat I think this would be really good if say you're a web agency and you have web developers working for you and you want to collaborate on changes you'll be able to do that with this tool so uh, here's the prices I think it's gonna be five dollars per user per month everything I'm going to show you in this video though is going to be free forever on this free plan in fact you don't even need to set up an account for them uh, with them in order to do everything we're going to do in this video I will say though that this is new and they have a offer right here if you scrolled up to the top of the page if you click here, they'll give you an account for 49 bucks and it's a lifetime account for it. Now there are a couple weaknesses in this tool that the developer is addressing. Number one, you don't get the mobile responsive options. So you can't click a button, have your website go into tablet view and make some changes and then have it go to a mobile view and make some changes. That's not here yet. They're going to be adding that. I don't know when, but that's what they're going to be adding. Another thing is, and I'm going to show you, when you make your changes and you go to save the CSS, it's actually like a download file. And what I would like to see instead is the actual CSS, and I can just copy and paste it into WordPress. But I'm going to show you all that right now. I think these are all very minor things. This is a really cool tool. So it is right here. I've got my stuff. Okay, this is when you, if you had an account and you logged in, this is what it would look like, like right here. You'd have different projects and stuff like that. Uh, so to get the Chrome extension, just go to Google and do a search for canvas flip or if you're already on the website there is these links right here get the chrome extension it's just like any chrome extension you click on this it'll prompt you to install it let's see what happens when i do that oh there it is it just popped right up and then you would click on add extension which i have actually already done all right so you, you could just go to google and do the search so here is the page that I'm working on right now on my website. And if you notice, it's built in Elementor. It's not live. It's a template I'm building in the Elementor library on my website. And so I'm just testing it on out. There's a lot of things I like. Now with Elementor, you get a lot of controls to make the different elements styled the way that you want, but they can't put every control in every element and that's reasonable. So one of the most, my favorite features with Elementor Pro is this blog grid and this is the what they call cards, the cards template for it. And it's beautiful. However, there isn't a control for the amount of shadow under each of these cards. There isn't a control for that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this new, new tool to write the CSS to make the shadow be what I want. And I'm going to just show you some other things. Uh, but it's perfectly reasonable that Elementor doesn't have that as an option in there. Uh, so let's just go for it here. Now, I'm obviously not going to be able to show you every aspect of this tool, but it is very easy to use. So since I'm in the video right now, I'm going to get out of the video because I'm going to start blocking things. So once you've installed the extension and you can see, I got a bunch of these extensions here. I even have a video about it. This is Colorzilla right here, Firebug, which I'm not going to probably use anymore. What font for no, for finding out what fonts are. This is spy bar. I need to make a video on that I made a video yesterday on this full page screen capture grammarly because I'm a poor speller but this is it right here 
visual inspector by canvas flip. So when I click on this, it's just going to pop up like this. And there are, here's the inspect tab and the collaborate tab. I'm not doing any collaboration. That's okay. And so here's a for inspect. So I want to click on here like this. And now I can start moving my mouse cursor over things that I might want to start changing. So I think if I wanted to change this green to a different color, if I just move it like that, it looks like it's fully selected. Now when I click, it's going to start showing the properties here. Now I can start adjusting properties. So if I wanted to add some padding in here on the top or at the bottom, I could just change this. So if I wanted to put 10 of padding there and a 10 of padding there, I just did that that easy. Now obviously if you're using Elementor, you can just use Elementor to do that. But keep in mind a lot of times when you have a free WordPress theme or even a paid WordPress theme, you might want to edit the spacing of say the header and there isn't an option in the theme. You can use this to do that. And uh, same thing with the colors of links. You can use this to do that. So I can scroll down. This is a real neat feature. I can actually export the image of what I selected as a PNG. That's pretty neat. I can modify position size. I can even rotate it. Obviously, I'm not going to want to rotate or flip this. Here is my typeface options. I could change that. I can change all of this stuff right here. It's really powerful. And check this out. Under fills, here is the color. So if I actually wanted to maybe play around trying different colors, I can do it right here. Now, obviously, I would be doing this in Elementor, but I'm just giving you this as an example. But the what I was really wanting to do with these cards is not an option in Elementor. So I'm going to move my cursor right here and it looks like I have a card selected. You can see by the blue on the outside. So now I'm going to click and you see it is selected and right here is all of the various properties for it. So I'm going to scroll down. Obviously if I wanted my font larger I could do it here but I could do that in Elementor. But what I can't do in Elementor is when I scroll down Here's this shadow option. I don't have the option to adjust this in Elementor, which is fine. So I'm going to go with much less of a blur. So right now it's set to 30 and I'm going to go ahead and make this five. So I'll just enter five and that went ahead and changed it. So now when I go here, you can see it's much, much less predominant because I just lowered it. And that's pretty much all you have to do to make your change. And then that change is actually saved in the little tool here and we can export that change. Okay, so now if I wanted to take this CSS change and make it live on my website, this is what I would do. I'll go ahead and click on the info tab and it says I've made eight changes. Now, obviously it also has this change and I'm, I'm not going to want to do that on my site. I just want this change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on export change and then it essentially downloads a zipped file to my computer. So now I'm going to go ahead and open that zip file. Okay, it is now opened and here are the two files that are in it. We want what is style underscore changes dot CSS. Now when I open it, this is what it looks like right here. And here is that setting for the postcard, which I said was the name of this style. Now here is, I, I'm not keeping this right here because this is that padding that I added. This is actually all I want. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And now I'm going to go into the customizer of my website. So the customizer is one of many places you can store CSS. So here is what it looks like now. And I'm in the customizer. I'm going to go to additional CSS. And I have a lot of custom CSS in here. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom here and I'm going to go ahead and drop this. Oops, I'm going to drop this into the bottom here. I'm going to just paste that in and then I'm going to click on publish so that I can publish that change right there. So I do have heavy caching on my site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close 
here. I'm going to close this editor like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a hard refresh and see if that change is applied. And I'm pretty sure it will be. There it is. The shadow has gone down significantly to what I wanted it. It's hard when you're not comparing them side by side going from tab to tab, but there's an obvious difference there. It's the amount of shadow that I wanted and I can further verify that if you're having a tough time by eye by going right here and then re-inspecting it like this. So let me select it one more time and then I'm gonna scroll down and you can see for the shadow, it kept it right there, which is that five on the blur, which is exactly what I wanted. So let me come up with another example. I'm gonna to go to courses. I am using Lifter LMS and Lifter LMS is notoriously painful to style. So let me go into a course that I'm not enrolled in right now. And let's see, one of these I'm sure I am not enrolled in. And I'm gonna show you how to edit the, the style of a Lifter LMS course page. Okay, so here we are. This is a, a course that I'm not enrolled in. And there's some things, you know, you might wanna change. You might wanna change the way the shadow is here, the size of this button, the color of this button, and the background there. This is not done in a page builder, so it's all custom CSS from here. So let's go ahead and do that tool again. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. I'll go into inspect, and let's first inspect these buttons. So I'm gonna click on it right there. And so maybe I don't want this button to be as tall. You can see right here it's set to a padding of 12 on the top and the bottom. So why don't I change that to five on the top and then five on the bottom. You can see it's already gone ahead and change that. I can increase the padding on the side if I wanted. I can make this whatever I want. And then perhaps what if I wanted to change the color? And this is actually a very common thing you're gonna maybe wanna do with Lifter LMS. You can go right here and you can see Here's the color, so I can change it from the color it is to any color I want, or I can drop my hex code in right there. And you saw how easy that was. If I wanted to remove the border, I can do this. If I wanted to add a shadow, I can go ahead and I can do this. There it is. Um, let's see, I might want to make it a little more transparent. I'm just actually, yeah, I wanna make this a little more transparent. I like something more subtle like that. And so I now have a, drop, a very subtle drop shadow behind these buttons. And say we don't like the size of this font here. We want this font to be larger. So I can just click on it. I can see the font that it is. Now you can't just choose any Google font. It's just gonna offer you the fonts that you're already looking loading on the page. So, but you can change things like the, the thickness of the font. You can change the alignment, the spacing. You can change uh, the, the capitalization of it. So we're here settings. I can go text transform and go all uppercase like that if I wanted to, uh, but I actually don't want to. Uh, you can change the size. Say I wanted this to be uh, 25, uh, for the size, I could do it just like that. So you have all of these options. I can change the color. Everything can be changed. And say the background here, I, I don't want it to be black like that. I wanted it to be a different color. I can go ahead and do the same thing just like that. And you saw how easy this was to change and all I'd have to do is export the CSS and then do that copy and paste. So this is a very awesome tool if you ask me. It is very, very awesome at making these style changes very, very fast. It is much easier than using Firebug or something like that to make these changes and then you just drop it into your customizer. Now there are lots of different places where you can put CSS on your website, store it. I think the best place 
Typically, he's going to be storing it in the customizer like you saw me do a moment ago. That's usually going to be the best place to store it. However, if you're using Beaver Builder or Elementor, there are specific places where you can store CSS changes that you only want applied to specific pages. You can do that in there. So anyways, this is Canvas Flip. I'm actually very excited about this. This is a, one of those tools that I personally see myself using a lot. Um, I didn't show you, there's a lot of things I didn't get a chance to show you. I didn't show you how to add a gradient. It's very easy to add a gradient, shadows, all that kind of stuff. You saw how easy it was. I think this is a tool that is is just ideal for the folks on this channel. And even if you're an expert web developer, sometimes a tool that might be more convenient is worth having. And so the, the nice thing is, is if you were interested in the paid plan, then you can generate a link you could send to a customer or someone you're collaborating with. And there's things I didn't show you, like you can actually edit text. If I wanted to, to put some different text in here, you could do that. Now that would be just for visual on WordPress. You'd have to go and then do it in whatever you're using to generate that text in WordPress. Uh, but it's good for quickly seeing what can go there and how it would look without having to make big commitments to changing things over and over again. This is one of those little power tools. Once again, it is Canvas Flip. I will go ahead and put a link to this page in the video description. Please, if you have a product hunt account, go here and upvote it. And then if you wanted to see what the different paid features bring, definitely go here and click through all these different options to read about everything that you can do with this tool. Doesn't slow down your website one bit, outputs very clean CSS, exactly how you would hand code it. I think this tool is definitely a winner and I can't wait to see where it goes, adding mobile editing options, live CSS editing options, hover link options, all of that kind of stuff. I'm pretty excited about this tool. So let me know what you think about the tool in the video description box down below. If you have any other quick CSS hacks, go ahead and put those down in the video description box as well. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.